I would like you to hear again the last sentence of this gospel. I cannot do anything on my own. I judge as I hear, and my judgment is just, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. If this is how Jesus describes himself, how can we describe ourselves any differently? What is Jesus saying here? He is obedient to the Father and acts on the Father's wishes. He knows the Father's will and he lives it. This means he subordinates his own will to that of the Father. Why? Because he knows that doing the Father's will is the greatest act he can do for the love of God and humanity, which is the fulfillment of the commandments. Remember how in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus made it clear that he was so afraid and he looked for another option, but he, he responded, not my will be done, but thine. And so we see he responded in his passion because the Father demanded it. It was an act of total love of God the Father and humanity that he took upon himself out of love for each and every one of us. We learn from St. Maximus the Confessor that the suffering Jesus encountered on the cross was the fruit of the devil trying to get Jesus to disobey the Father, stop his passion, and get off the cross. But he was totally obedient to the Father. The lesson here is how can we have an attitude any different than what Jesus says at the end of this gospel passage and say that we are living the Catholic faith? The answer is simple, we can't. So how do we take this attitude upon ourselves? We must be in daily relationship with Christ in his church, and we do that through our prayer and worship. God demands of us actually two things, love of God and love of neighbor, no more, no less. The saints tell us that prayer is an essential part of our life in order to be whom Christ wants us to be, and the Father created us to be. As Catholics, prayer is not an option or something that we do when we get around to it. Being a person of prayer and living in relationship to Christ and His church is as essential to our holiness as breathing is to our survival. St. Paul calls us to pray always so that we can be more like Christ every day. How do we do this? St. Alphonsus of Liguori says, to talk to God as we would a friend. It's that simple. We can also add to this by engaging in devotions, such as the daily rosary. And of course, we go to Mass weekly because this is the way Jesus called for us to interact with Him and the Father through Him. It is God calling us to be in communion with Him so that we may be more like Him and transformed in Christ. We look to the saints and model their ways and methods of prayer. In fact, during this week, which culminates in St. Patrick's Day, this is a great time to pray St. Patrick's Breastplate, one of the most powerful prayers in our tradition, and I pray it regularly. The Venerable Fulton Sheen, Archbishop Fulton Sheen, told priests to pray a holy hour daily and promised that no priest who did this would be lost. Why? Because prayer transforms those who engage in it to be more like Christ, and prayer before the Blessed Sacrament does the same. Lay people he also invited to engage in a similar practice, and there are plenty of places to do that, possibly your local parish, possibly a local shrine. We have a new shrine in the Archdiocese of Boston, the Divine Mercy Shrine. I even dropped into a little rustic chapel at St. Thomas More College in Merrimack, New Hampshire, when I wanted to do my holy hour. When we pray, God changes our hearts and minds and lead us, leads us to be the people He calls us to be in holiness and love. The great father of the church, Tertullian, explained the power of prayer this way. It is only, it, its only art is to call back the souls of the dead from the very journey into death, to give strength to the weak, to heal the sick, to exercise the possessed, to open prison cells, to free the innocents from their chains. 
prayer cleanses from sin, drives away temptation, stamps out persecutions, comforts the faint-hearted, gives new strength to the courageous, brings travelers safely home, calms the waves, confounds robbers, feeds the poor, overrules, and lifts up the fallen, supports those who are falling, sustain those who stand firm. It is indeed a powerful practice when we engage in prayer. Remember those words when someone says, oh, what is prayer going to do? Prayer to God is power the Lord gave to us at our baptism, the same force he gave to the prophets of the Old Testament. Daily prayer can transform families. It heals marriages if both spouses engage in it. It will strengthen your Catholic witness for the, and for the shut-ins that I'm speaking to you, your prayer is really powerful. Prayer is an essential part of who we are as Catholics. 